everyone, Jeff DeVerter, uh, Rackspace Technology. Welcome to another Cloud Talk Live. That's right, welcome back to Tuesday. Uh, we were on Thursday the other week, we're now back on Tuesday. It's very confusing, but I would love to welcome you to today's episode of Cloud Talk Live. Welcome to the program. As you know, this isn't just a one way us talking at you. We'd love for you to be a part of the conversation. In order to do that, you've got to introduce yourself. So whatever platform you're watching us on, LinkedIn or YouTube or mine or Rackspaces, introduce yourself, type your little name in. Who are you? Where are you? Now, if you want to get some information over to us, maybe you have an idea for a great program. Maybe you want to be a guest on the program. Who knows? We've had people reach out about that. Well, just send me an email. Send us an email. Daniel's back there pushing all the fancy buttons to make this work. Uh, uh, Julia and, uh, and Megan as well. Uh, all get the emails that come in to solve at rackspace.com. And if you will send us one, well, then we can introduce you and we can check you out and see, uh, you know, what you want to do, how you can help out. So feel free to shoot us a note. Uh, Ayan, welcome you win the prize for the first person to introduce themselves. I'll drink a sip of coffee to you. All right. Well, we got a great program today. As you know, <laughs> Sean Gardner's here saying nice things. Uh, thank you, Sean, for being here. Uh, Rodney Kidd is here as well. Thanks so much. San Antonio is representing well. I'm not even in San Antonio today. But that's all right. Uh, Hugh and Michael. Michael, you get a badge for being an honorary member of the team. You're here almost every week. Glad that you are here. Uh, shoot me an email. Tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're always here. Uh, uh, intermediate working on your skills. Very good. Well, this is just the kind of program to um, uh, increase your techno technology literacy. And today, all things happening here in the month of October is all about National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. In fact, the whole theme for that is see yourself in cyber. And uh, maybe our guest today, Raj, will, will elaborate a little bit more on that. We've got Anish from Bangalore is here. Ooh, VP of InfoSec. Ed is here and an ex-racker. Ed, you know, once a racker, always a racker. Um, I am told we're a little bit glitchy over here, so I'm going to free up some memory. And before we get moving a little bit farther, let's kill a few things. There goes a few things out the window. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. Jennifer, well, or Jeanette, welcome. Glad that you are here. All right, Daniel, let me know if that helps at all. Well, let's, uh, and Adam Bunch is here. Adam Bunch in North Carolina. I didn't know you were over there. I didn't see you there. Nigeria is here today. Uh, Professor Carlos is here from Mexico City, if memory serves. All right, let's press on with the program here. Uh, enough of me trying to figure out why my feed is glitchy. As you know, the program that we're doing here is, uh, is our uh, Cloud Talk Live, which is part of the Solve program. Now here at Rackspace, we have a thought leadership program and it is called Solve. And everything that we do here is for free. And so if you go to rackspace.com slash solve, that address will come up, well, a few times throughout our program. You will find articles, you'll find infographics, you'll find research, you'll find a uh, link to some of the podcasts. But if you want to get uh, the podcast as well as the audio from these programs, well, simply subscribe to Cloud Talk anywhere you can find your podcast. You can see a list of some of them across the bottom of the screen. So go check that out. Uh, all right, Frisco uh, is here. Glad you're here. Uh, all right, well, with that, folks, I want to bring up uh, the guest for today and get into our conversation. Uh, Raj Dada is the CEO over at a company called Oak9. Now, Raj is going to tell us all about what Oak9 does. We're going to learn about his uh, learn about his career a little bit more and dig into the cybersecurity aspects of developer written code. So, with that, Daniel, where's my new best friend, Raj? Hey, how you doing? Dan? There he is. Hey, Raj, welcome to the program from Balmy, Chicago. <laughs> It's nice and in the 30s today, so yeah, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, excited. Does not mean what you think it means. I'm thinking <laughs> of uh, uh, what was that? You, you use, keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Princess Bride. That's what it was. Yep. Well, Raj, um, uh, again, welcome to the program. Tell us a little bit about Oak Nine. Tell us the mission. Sure. Our mission is 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 very simple. We're we're out here to uh, secure infrastructure as code. So uh, as, as you've seen the huge adoption of infrastructure as code and, and customers using you know, products such as Terraform to increase uh, the volume and the expansion of their IAC 
uh, environments. Uh, what Oak9 is doing is we're, we're simply securing your code throughout the development lifecycle. And then once you go into the deployment, we're securing you there as well. And this has been an area that's really been um, really left untouched for quite some time. And so this is, this is an area that we've been focused on for over uh, three plus years and uh, continue to build out the company. That's incredible. Now you're CEO over there, but uh, you haven't always been CEO to, uh, at your own company. Let's let's learn a little bit about where you spent the past 18 or so years. Yeah, um, it's it's scary to think, but um, you know I've been in the industry now for almost uh, 22, 23 years. Um, I spent my first almost 19 years at IBM at uh, various uh, uh, leadership roles uh, in the company and opportunities to run, you know. Midwest, West Coast teams, North America teams, and global teams as well. And I had a great opportunity to actually work at their headquarters where I got an opportunity to see a, a lot of things from, uh, from, the, from the top. That's awesome. Uh, a soft spot, soft spot in my heart for IBM. My father was a lifer there, and uh, so my whole upbringing is uh, responsible. I was, I, was, I was almost a lifer there. <laughs> almost a lifer. Almost a lifer. That's fantastic. Well, you know, Raj, you're there in what looks like some pretty awesome uh, real estate there in, in Chicago. And we were chatting before we went live. Uh, and this is a little off topic for the cybersecurity aspect, but I think it's an interesting conversation for us to have. And that is return to office. You know, we were, we were, we were all locked at home for a good long while. And then we sort of opened some doors and people could trickle in if they wanted to. And then there were some mandates. You know, what are you guys doing for, for back to office and dealing with how people are working together. Yeah, I mean, you know, interestingly enough, uh, you know, our, our company really started building out in 2020, right at the pandemic timeframe. Nice and, timing. Uh, yeah, we've, we've chosen, chosen some perfect timings in the environment. Um, but, you know, with that, uh, you know, we also hired all of our employees via Zoom. And so, you know, most of our employees, we actually hadn't met until uh, June 2021 when we did a company all hands. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like, we have a, a beautiful office space here in Chicago. Uh, we don't mandate our employees to come in. But what we have seen is, you know, employees have a tendency of wanting to come into the office a couple of times a week. And a lot of that is around collaboration. A lot of that is around, you know, just being with other human beings and not just sitting at home. Um, and it's also being, you know, there's a lot more creativity when you are together. The ability, you know, Jeff, you and I were talking about, you know, having a whiteboard and some markers, you know, it really changes how your mind thinks and how you operate. Uh, on top of that, you know, every Thursday here at Oak Nine, you know, for those that are local to Chicago, we do lunches and and have drinks after work. You know, so that builds a nice uh, team environment for us as well. Yeah, for for, a, for about a year and ten months, I had left Rackspace between eighteen and twenty, and uh, went to work for uh, over at CloudReach, and they did a thing every Friday. They called it Cloudy Lunch, and that was wherever region or city you were in, you got together for a company provided lunch. Yeah. The afternoons and Friday were not very productive, but uh, but we sure saw a lot of people there. It's probably not that productive, regardless across the board. Well, though. but there's a fine line between pr productive and team building, and and yep. one is not to discount the other. Agreed. Yep. Well, hey, let's jump back, back into the the Oak Nine mission, and your software just fascinates me because you know when you think about everything that's happening inside of of cloud and the world is on this bandwagon of moving what they can out into cloud provider of choice. And that happens in large part in infrastructure as code, especially at first. You know, we like to say there's all these great serverless things going on and there are, but the reality is, is infrastructure is infrastructure. So that should be deployed through code and not through clicky clicky in the interface because, you know, as these environments get larger and larger, it's impossible to keep up with all of that. So that means code is being written, not necessarily the code that runs in the cloud. We'll get to that in a minute. But this is just the code to deploy the code. And that's where you guys really start to sing. Yeah, uh, you hit it on the head. It's, it's, you know, and we're, what we're seeing is with the adoption of cloud, you know, companies are looking for ways to scale faster, deploy their applications faster. And it's just it's right now it's all about speed. Yeah. And, you know, security has been struggling to keep up because, you know, we're seeing, as you mentioned, you know, writing these lines of code just to deploy your infrastructure now in the cloud. You know, we're seeing customers that have anywhere from lines of, you know, 60 to 80,000 lines of code just for any type of uh, a simple application. And, you know, what ends up happening is as, as, you know, customers are taking their applications throughout the development lifecycle, 
what ends up happening at the very end is, you know, if you haven't secured your code through, you know, pre-deployment, once you deploy, and then there's some security issues that are, are caught, you know, you have to go through the whole development lifecycle all over again. And what happens then is you have downtime, you have to remove your production, your application from production and go through the whole life cycle again. And that's, that's become very costly and time inefficient, right? So for those that are trying so hard and so fast to deploy their code and take it through the life cycle, if they forget about security, they end up getting uh, penalized after post deployment, right? Right. You know, and we have to get away from in, in any aspect, whether it's the code to deploy the code or it's the code itself, that code, that security can no longer be this phase gate that you have to go through, you know, close to the end of pushing to production. It has to be baked into the entire process. And the way we see a lot of that today is through DevSecOps. And that's getting our security folks, people closer to the developers, realizing they're not a threat, that they are there to help. But your code takes this to, to a different level, and that is how do you integrate moment by moment as the developer develops and yeah. being aware of, of any issues that may be there? Yeah, I mean, we pride ourselves on continuous monitoring, right? But we also know, you know, uh, you bring up an interesting point about, you know, security getting closer to DevOps. We also know, you know, the developers and security uh, professionals have never been best of friends, right? And uh, as we look at, you know, the start of Oak 9, you know, my other two co-founders, one's fairly deep in the cybersecurity space, you know, and the other one's very deep in the development DevOps space. You know, you stick them in a room, you know, uh, at times it becomes Royal Rumble. So I could, I could always imagine, you know, what's happening out there at other companies when, you know, there's, there's different gates that have been created by security where developers want to go even faster, right? And so we, we, we're working on solving that problem. And I love that because there's no technology solution that stands on its own. It's always implemented and dealt with with real life, you know, human individuals. And uh, I love what you're doing here. And that is helping to break down the barriers between the security team, who I affectionately for years called the no team. They were there to tell you, you can't do things because of all of the I shouldn't even put it in air quotes. They're very real concerns, but the problem was security lived over here, over, over here. And, you know, the developers sorry, I'm a really skinny window. We're over there. And uh, and so what that meant was the security team was hyper vigilant on security alone and didn't necessarily always balance business need and business requirements. But the more that you bring these folks together, you realize they're not enemies uh, and they are both working on the same team. You know, I always used to look at security and the legal team through the same lens. And that was if I'm not talking to them, I'm having a good day because I'm not in trouble. Nope. But we have to break down this mode where security is not here to get you in trouble or point out when you're in trouble. They're there to help keep everyone from being in trouble. Agreed. And, and it's also, you know, historically, you know, it's been security setting the guardrails. And every time that you're going through, you know, each step of the development process, you know, you're getting stopped and you have to hit uh, certain areas where now if it's a continuous monitoring and you have that flow where se security is already baked in through the process and the moment that there are security drifts that occur, you're alerted and you're able to make changes on the fly, that changes everything. It changes everything because, again, whether it's we're breaking down social barriers or whether we're talking about um, how can we just be more efficient as an organization and not have to get to the very end and not have to go back to the very beginning. You know, it's like waiting in line at Disneyland and you get to the front of the line, realize you got the wrong pass or you're in the wrong line and back you go. Uh, everyone yep. just wants to ride the ride. You just want to get your code into production. The other thing that's kind of cool is when your code... I'm selling your code. Whenever, whenever you know that you realize there's an issue, hey, you're connecting to this database in an insecure way. Would you like us to fix that for you? And then automatically do the work. It's not just pointing it out so the developer fixes it, but actually coming alongside and doing some of that work. Yep. And you know that's uh, you know one thing, Jeff. You hit it on the head. But one thing that we've done very differently than what we've seen in the market and in competition is uh, you know what we've seen from you know competitors or players in the space is they've looked to statically check the code. So which that, yeah. what that means is, you know, just they're looking for misconfigurations throughout the board. So if you look at like HTTP, forgot the S, great. You know, for us, that's table stakes. Uh, what Oak9 is really doing is, is holistically understanding the application. So mm -hmm. if it's a healthcare application, for example, what we're doing is, you know, we understand this is a healthcare application. It's gonna have specific guardrails that healthcare applications require, right? And when we have, you know, it's not just like looking for rules-based engines or anything like that. It's that's part of it, but it's it's truly understanding what overall what the application's doing, 
who, what the application is interacting with, who it's interacting with, mm -hmm. and therefore we can put the specific guardrails in place for that specific application. So there's not the security issues that you know we see happening in the marketplace today. I love that. Now, now Raj Chandan asked, I think, just actually a bit of clarification from you. He says, continuous monitoring by which tools? And so maybe just clarify when you say continuous monitoring in the development process, what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if you're in your Git repository, right, we don't expect you to sit, like if you're doing your development work in your Git repository, you know, we're, we're in, integrated with that uh, completely, right? So you'll get your updates with your, your code updates right there. So you're not, you don't have to be in the Oak9 platform, right? Uh, also from an, and I saw another one with regards to integration and things like that. We're integrated to all your, you know, the service now, Jenkins, et cetera, right? So what we've done is we spent the past almost two years truly just building out this product with all the right integrations, with all the right um, uh, monitoring across the board. So yeah. it was, it's very customer friendly. Uh, Raj, how do uh, how do people you know take this thing for a test drive? How do they uh, how do they how do they get their hands on it and figure out if it's right for their organization? Yeah, there's multiple ways to do it. Um, we actually today are officially announcing our community edition uh, to the public, nice. so you can actually go onto our website and start using uh, us for free. So you, you you'll have an opportunity to use one application uh, or to uh, leverage one application in the Oak Nine platform, and we'll give you all the bells and whistles. So there's no guardrails or anything like that we've put up. We've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of other companies out there, you know, they'll, they'll take back the features or whatnot. Uh, we were pretty diligent on the fact that we wanted to make sure that you got the entire open nine experience with us. So. I love that. So, so guardrail to a single application, but the full suite of tools. Absolutely. Uh, I love that. So, um, you know, if we go back to, there may be some people asking, you know, questions in their heads, if you're not developers going, you know, why can't, you know, you get these DevSec people together and have them just monitor and look through the code. You know, let's talk for just a second, the scale, the size of code, not even the applications being your healthcare app that's being deployed, the app to deploy the infrastructure itself. How many lines of code are we talking about on average? Oh, it's, it's growing day by day, but I'll tell you like the average code that we're seeing is, you know, from a, a decent size, like a, a perfect example is a decent size FinTech customer was about 80,000 lines of Terraform code, right? So um, that's, I mean, and imagine, you know, like one or two security engineers trying to comb through per application, 80,000 lines of, of code. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, and, and customers have shared this with me is they're able to only cover about 10% or so of that code. Right. And then the rest is, you know, you're hoping that there's not any, anything that is out of line through that process. Right. So that's what is, um, you know, what makes us very special and different. Hey, Dan Manola asked an interesting question. He says, does this also monitor code that's in a production environment or is Absolutely. it just the development process? Nope. Uh, we so we, we monitor it throughout the development life cycle. Once it goes into production, we connect via APIs and we're continuously monitoring it there, too, because as we know, you know, changes do occur in the production environment. And it probably doesn't always go through the proper change request because someone will want to add something on the fly because it's already in production, right? So that's how we're able to get that done. That's really cool. All right, so I can't find any reason why somebody wouldn't want to use code like this. Uh, why do people say no? What keeps you from, you know, when, the, when the door doesn't get open, why, why are companies not using tools like this? I, I think it's the maturity of IAC today. You know, uh, infrastructure as code is still, you know, it's still a fairly new uh, technology and phenomenon yeah. that's out there. And, you know, the times when we, we, we really don't, uh, I'm saying this at the CEO of Oak9, but we really don't get a no from, from clients, right? Usually it's, you know, this is great, but I have so many other priorities and my team hasn't fully adopted IAC yet. Yeah. But the customers that are a little bit more forward thinking, more bleeding edge, we're seeing a lot of like, quick adoption on that, you know? And so uh, I, the market is, is shifting there. I'll tell you, Jeff, like uh, if you asked me about a year ago, I would get on calls and I would spend most of my time explaining to customers the first like good 15 minutes what IAC was. Yeah. And today it's changed to, I have it. I have a problem. <laughs> tell me how you're going to fix it. Right. So, <laughs> so we're, we're seeing the evolution and just in a year, you know, it's moved that fast, right? So next year when we're talking, you know, around this time, we'll probably have a completely different discussion around this topic. Totally. Isn't that interesting to work in an environment like this where things are changing at that rapid of a pace? Yeah. So it, so effectively then what you hear is you don't hear no's, you hear not now. We, we hear, you know, let's, let's talk in a couple more months. We're still adapting additional Terraform, et cetera, right? 
Awesome. All right. Well, uh, well, Raj, this has been a fascinating conversation. I love what you're doing to help secure the world because the world now more and more is running in the cloud and the cloud being deployed through infrastructure is code IAC. So, um, so uh, thank you so much for being on the program today. Thanks for uh, venturing out on a blustery Chicago morning to, to spend some time with us. Oh, it's nice and warm. It's in the thirties today. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm in my you're you're going to be challenging for that for this temperature in January, February. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jeff. I really do. Absolutely. Raj, thanks so much. And come back around. We'd love to have you. You bet. All right. All right, everybody. Let's press on with the program. Oak9. I heard about these. They're partners of Rackspace. It's a big part of how we got to know Raj. Uh, but when I started to learn about their, their technology, it... Um, I just talk about it everywhere I go because everybody should be using it. So um, go check it out. There's a free tier. If you're a developer, go play with it. Why wouldn't you? It's free. All right. Uh, well, let's press on with the program here. Let me find the go go button. By the way, uh, there was one person who did recognize the mug the Troy and Abed in the morning mug, given to me by my good friend Matt Lathrop, works here at Rackspace. Uh, we saw ourselves as the uh, as the Troy and Abed of the Microsoft world back in the day. But if you're not familiar, uh, if you've ever watched the show Community, they always said it was going to be six uh, six seasons and a and a movie, and then they went off the air. They're making a movie. That's right. Super exciting. I don't know why I'm telling you that, but maybe just because because Sean saw the mug. All right, well, let's move on, folks. Uh, I want to remind you to go check out rackspace.com slash solve and learn some things. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of information over there. We've got our new security uh, content that's uh, uh, over there. We're going to be talking about that maybe next week a little. Ooh, we got next week's going to be an interesting week, but wait till the end. I'll tell you all about it and you will love it. All right, well, with that, let's move on into the next part of the program. And that means we're moving from the cloud discussion on to this week in the cloud. And that's where I get to talk to you about, you know, how the cloud is making the news and, uh, and why it is important to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the articles that I have found for you uh, this week. Ooh, speaking of talent, this is a really interesting article, and uh, I can't copy and paste the link. I will get you the link as well and, and put it in, in here. But the cloud has a problem, folks. This is an article from InfoWeek and or InfoWorld, excuse me. And it talks about, uh, you know, and in fact, it goes to the conversation I just had with Raj, and that is the cloud has a people problem. There are not enough people to do all of the things that need to be done in the cloud. You could look at the microcosm of how Oak9 is solving that problem of security professionals looking at code um, uh, through their software, but you can go to any aspect of the cloud right now in what's happening. And if you look at news coming from AWS, Azure, Google, what you see is more and more they are posting uh, ways that uh, programs that they're running through other universities, through free training, through uh, all kinds of grassroots efforts to in, uh, educate the world, to get a more intelligent workforce to be able to deploy and manage solutions on their platforms because there's not enough people to do what needs to be done. If we go and look at how much stuff has been moved to the cloud, there are varying numbers. We could say that about 30% of the enterprises worldwide have moved their workloads to the cloud. That means we're still on the, the upslope of the bell curve. And there is a very strong realization that the cloud providers will not make their uh, their goals in, in where people are wanting to move to the cloud. Their biggest risk now is that there's enough smart people out there. So uh, go over to InfoWorld and do a search on the cloud has a people problem after this broadcast and uh, and check out that article. I actually read the entire thing. I don't oftentimes read every word in the article because they're just good enough. But, but in fact, I, I have a snippet. I'm going to read you a snippet. Much of the multi-cloud marketing in the past several years has had more to do with vendors wanting to sell uh, their wares as opposed to how customers could realistically implement those solutions. Uh, I would encourage you to go check that stuff out, that article out. Uh, other news that I have for you is uh, this is an article from Bernard Marr. And let's draw a line in the sand, folks. It is now October 18th and the first of the 2023 trends has come in. Uh, so Bernard, who I have met, he was on our, our conference we had about a year and a bit ago. Uh, super smart guy. He's a futurist. He's a technologist. And uh, he had some news for the world. Has some here around the top five cloud computing trends that he thinks we'll see in 2023. I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of it. You can go read his article. It's over on Forbes.com. 
And uh, one was an increased investment in cloud security and resilience. Hello, Raj, are you listening? That's all you. Uh, number two, uh, multi-cloud as an increasingly popular strategy. We're going to be talking a lot about multi-cloud. I think he's spot on here, but I don't think it means what you think it means. Again, back to Princess Bride movie quotes. Number three, the AI and ML powered cloud. Yes, there will be more AI and ML. And number four, ooh, I'm a big fan of this one, low code and no code cloud services. So going away from, not going away from, adding to whether it's the Microsoft Power Platform or whether it's UiPath or Automation Anywhere, but more and more having this as a service. And then lastly, innovation and consolidation in, wait for the industry, cloud gaming. Isn't that an interesting thing to share? Cloud gaming. All right. So you can find uh, Bernard's article over on Forbes.com. And I'm going to push that button so you don't see the green screen. All right. Well, let's move on. And you know that the next in the program means we are now going to uh, dig into what is new from the cloud providers. We are fresh off. Uh, Microsoft, what was it? Not Inspire, Ignite. Ignite, that was last week. All kinds of announcements there. I hope you're paying attention to some of those. Uh, so from the uh, fresh in from AWS, guys, half the time I choose the AWS articles because they name their stuff the best. Amazon Detective helps reduce the time to investigate Amazon, sorry, guard duty findings by grouping related findings. So now there's a service to write on top of the service on top of the service. I love these cloud providers. Aren't they fun? Uh, so new service called Amazon Detective to help you get to your information faster. All right. Next on the list from over at Azure is, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. I'm going backwards real quick. So on AWS. So um, coming up in November, I'm going to get you the exact date. I think it's the 17th. I'm not exactly sure. It's whatever that last Tuesday is before the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we are going to be doing an, a reInvent No Before You Go event. And so we're bringing some of the smartest people I know at Rackspace and AWS we got a lot of them to talk about their things you need to go check out should you be going to AWS. So watch for that as a, as a show. Uh, now over at, oh, this is cool, over at Azure. This is a new one in development, introducing Express Route Metro. Now Express Route Metro allows uh, you to actually create, to bypass even more networking gear and get greater speeds uh, between different Azure regions. So uh, Express Route uh, Metro. So Eric, uh, old racker friend of mine, and now over at AWS, used to make fun of the term um, express route. He can now tease it some more because they're leaning into his joke. All right, let's move on over to Google. What's going on at Google? So they've got some updates in GA. Now you can, excuse me, now you can view your Google Kubernetes engine costs in cloud billing reports and cost data exported directly over into BigQuery. What in the world isn't run by BigQuery these days, I wonder? So um, it's, it's interesting when you think, again, I talked about, oh, I mentioned it earlier, services on top of services. Uh, I love to see when uh, these cloud providers utilize other aspects of their cloud to give new services greater capability. Exactly what we see happening right there uh, in, uh, in that last item. Now, all this information available over at rackspace.com slash solve. That's the only thing I sell around here. Or is it? What I also sell is you coming to work with us. Now, my good friend Teresa has moved on to other, I don't know if I'm going to call it greener pastures, but other pastures, which means we have a new opening over in the Microsoft 365 team. And that is on the Rackspace job of the day. The only thing I sell here is you working here. So Microsoft 365 technical product manager. So not just a product manager, but a technical product manager. What does this job entail? Well, there's all kinds of things you can read on the screen, but it's be working. I'm going to tell you, it's working hand in hand with the product manager to make sure technically what we're bringing to market is uh, exactly what the customer needs and is aligned with their requirements. So if you are a Microsoft person, if you are smart in all of their tech and their skill capabilities, well, just head on over to rackspace.jobs and you'll find this uh, the, uh, this job opportunity above the fold somewhere, I am sure. We're really trying to get this one hired up. I, you know, in the past, I've just gone and found my favorite jobs that I thought people would enjoy. I've partnered up now with HR, and this is a hot one. They're trying to get filled. So if you're smart in this stuff and you uh, want to check it out, well, come on over and hang out with us. Uh, very cool. So I'm not going to answer that question, but Raj can grab it. Hey, uh, so guys, if you want to learn more, go over to rackspace.com slash solve. 
and uh, and check out all of this information. Now, next Tuesday, oh, do we have a day for you. I need you to mark your calendars uh, because we are doing a very special event. But before I tell you what that event is, I'm going to say thank you to these people right somewhere. I can't get my finger to point in the right direction. There they are uh, at Dynamics. Guys, they are the leaders in full stack observability. I'm going to be with them at an event in Irvine, California tomorrow night. That's right. I get on a plane tomorrow morning. And uh, we're meeting at the Shelby Event Center. So it's going to be a really cool place to present Shelby the car. And uh, and so AppDynamics, the leader in full stack observability, head over to AppDynamics.com to learn more. They are an awesome sponsor of this program. Now, next Tuesday, I told you I was going to tell you about next Tuesday. Take a look at this. We have a cybersecurity summit and we're bringing some really incredible people in. I've got Gary Alterson, who's our vice president of security services here. Karen O'Reilly Smith, who is our chief security officer. Uh, we also have Janet Hines, who is the Chief Information Security Officer at iHeartMedia. Really excited about that. And then, of course, Kenny Johnson from our partner over at Cloudflare. We are going to be unpacking all of the things that occurred during uh, during this past, uh, well, what we're still experiencing, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. This is going to be live from the castle, Rackspace's corporate headquarters, next Tuesday. So you're going to want to be a part of that. And it's at a different time. Don't come here at 830, but come here at 10 o'clock Central Time. Mark your calendars now and we will see you then. Everyone, I want to thank you for another incredible episode. I've loved every minute to hang out with you folks. But now it's time to head on to the day. So I hope you have a great one. And we'll be back on Tuesday for another episode of Cloud Talk Live.